Harry's Why, Part 102.37. The United States does not care. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, utilising examples in the press and from other media to enable you to understand more about the workings of narcissism. As always, I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the material. I provide you with the analysis. We have an article by Ellie Kirk that tells us, I don't think Americans care. Harry's wife and Harry hit with royal fatigue warning in the United States. Harry's wife and Prince Harry could be facing fatigue in the US audience. They are attempting to cultivate away from the royal family. A royal expert has told express.co.uk. The Duke, 38, and Duchess of Sussex, <coughs> 41, returned to the United States shortly after the Queen's State funeral. Professor Celie Otnes, co-author of Royal Fever, fuck me, another book, has suggested that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are likely laying low as they catch up on their lives in the United States. What? Seeing how many chickens of authenticity died whilst they were away? Wondering what they're going to do in terms of uprooting the parental trees and moving them to Hopeless Ranch? Wondering why... Still, Oprah isn't returning the calls. Are those the type of things that they're having to catch up on? Well, I guess they do lead extraordinarily busy lives. Uh, perhaps it might be the case that Harry's wife is determining what further fashion iconic moments she'll engage in, which actually will just provide me with more material for a further H.G. Tudor fashion show. Anyway, Professor Celia Otnes told express.co.uk, I don't think Americans care that much about their brand, adding this is likely heightened by their lack of connection to the royal family. She continued, We Americans might all be experiencing a bit of fatigue with the royal story after all of the Queen's coverage. What a bummer for Harry's wife, huh? How dare the Queen go and die and attract all of that attention for her funeral coverage? People around the world mourning her demise, where now they're going to get fatigued in terms of all things royal, particularly in the United States. Damn and curse it, mutters Harry's wife. Uh, Professor Otnes then suggested that economic woes, the fast approaching midterm elections, and concerns over Vladimir Putin will likely take precedence over thoughts on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Well, anybody that's got a brain that functions is likely to be concerned by those matters and things such as, is that an ingrowing toenail? Did I leave the iron on? What colour should I paint the front of my house? Those are even more pressing concerns and questions that would take precedence in the mind of anybody that is sensible over thinking about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Why do fools fall in love? That might be a question that would preoccupy somebody. Why does it always rain on me? Somebody else might ask. Yes, questions, questions, more questions than answers. They're ruminating on such important matters as why is it that buttered bread always lands buttered side down. We're always wondering, why is it that whenever you go to go to the fridge to find that last can, that last tin of, of Coke Zero, some fuck has pinched it? Those are the matters that are undoubtedly pressing the good minds of American citizens over and above thinking about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. But the article ploughs on nevertheless. Professor Pauline McLaren of Royal Holloway University of London also told express.co.uk that there were indicators of distance between the Sussexes and the royal family, even during displays of unity in the mourning period for the Queen. No shit, Professor. I wouldn't need a professorship to identify that. She said the Duke and Duchess appeared to be very much on the sidelines of the royal events, and they disappeared quickly after it. The Duke and Duchess returned to the United States and their two children, Archie and Lilibet, three days after the Queen's funeral. Archie said he hadn't realised they'd gone as he'd been camped out beneath the parental trees. The new monarch also used his first televised speech as sovereign to extend what has been widely considered an olive branch to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, where King Charles III said, He wanted to express my love for Harry and Harry's wife as they continue to build their lives overseas, but they'd better think twice about fucking coming back here again. The Duke and Duchess relocated to Harry's wife's home state of California back in 2020, yada, yada, yada. They have since announced commercial partnerships, blah, 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 rhubarb. The pair quickly revealed that they signed details with streaming giants, Spotify and Netflix, repeat, repeat, repeat. 
Thus, could they be getting fatigued? Well, earlier this week, Harry's wife resumed the releases of the release of episodes for her archetypes pod crap, which were paused following the Queen's death. In a statement released shortly after the death of the late Sovereign, Yada Yada heard it before. The production, the first to come from the audio branch of the Duke and Duchess Archibald brand, said it aimed to investigate the labels that try to hold women back because men don't matter, particularly Prince Harry. Well, it's all the usual nonsense that we've come to expect. But is it the case that there is going to be a royal fatigue in the United States? Is that what our transatlantic cousins anticipate? You tell me. Those of you who are in the good old United States, what are your views about it? Pending that, let's go below the line and see if there are any Yankee Doodles who want to share their views. SCD states, American here, we don't like them much at all. Harry's wife podcasts are ridiculous. Her culture education was because of food she ate. Her family already said she lied about the Korean bathhouse and that she did not really have a friendship with the only Asian girl in her classes at school. She missed the point of the satire of Austin Powers and got the idea about the Dragon Lady from a Teen Mag article from last year. The article is about how the Asian actress who played the part debunked the idea her character was an Asian trope. Harry just comes across as spoiled, petulant, whiny, clueless and henpecked. Well, SCD, what do you, uh, what do you really think? Ivan Adaka. Not just America, because of the vile, disgusting way they treated his family, especially his grandparents, the majority of people in the United Kingdom despise them. Freckles 3107. Not only the way they treated their grandparents, a lot has to do with a totally unprovoked assault on the UK public. Pilfoy. Myself and many Americans who I know have great respect for the British monarchy. We have no fascination with me again and has. If anything, they seem like ungrateful, disingenuous couple who seem unhappy with everything. I thought they stepped away from royal duties because they wanted privacy. Why then the podcast, the magazine and TV interviews, and the public relations team? I don't understand why the Daily Express even covers them as royal news. Give them the privacy they want, please. I'm good if I never see another article with their names. Pete, 18. It's funny, but if we didn't read the UK papers online and all the silly stories about the nasty pair, Harry and Harry's wife wouldn't hear anything about them here in California, and we live about 40 miles from where they live. Perhaps if all the newspapers in the United Kingdom didn't run multi-stories of them daily, everyone could forget about them, for sure. <clears throat> Floriat replies, I agree entirely, but it'll never happen. The press media and the general public cannot get enough of them. They are 6,000 miles away and we can't leave them alone. Lauren Act 2, British tabloids are making too much money off Harry and Harry's wife. They and their financial balance sheets are addicted to them. Emav, how are Harry's wife and Harry viewed by the USA public? The people that I know view them as a pair of attention-seeking, money-grubbing users of no particular distinction. Their constant scheming and freeloading in multi-millionaire homes has lowered the level of respect of the Sussexes in the mind of Americans. Most of us wish they would just shut up and leave. Head held high. So refreshing to hear opinions from your side of the pond. I think that Ginge and Cringe thought that their future lay in celebrity and fame on the Hollywood circuit, but their shallowness and cheap backstabbing have alienated them from their intended market. Their advisors are in la-la land, and they're laughing all the way to the bank. One final thought. I hope that every time the name Lilibet passes from Ginger's lips, he is reminded of his shameful treatment towards his grandmother over the final two years of her life. Philina G sums it up pretty succinctly. We can't stand them. Woman interrupted, it's not royal fatigue, it's Harry and his wife's fatigue. They are boring the pants off everyone with their drivel and need for attention. The USA will see some real royals when Catherine and William visit. I am sure they will see what real royals bring to the table and how shallow and boring Harry and his wife really are. Supporter there of William and the Princess of Wales. Baz Red won. The world has at last acknowledged that without the royal family, this pair have nothing. They're not royal. They're not celebrities. They're not popular. Ice is melting and polar bears are prowling for food. Well, there we have it. Mackenzie Poet adds, The fatigue has already turned to loathing because ultimately we Americans are deeply troubled by Harry's wife and Harry's relentless attacks against the British people. Keep in mind, we recognise Britain's sacrifices during the war and how she saved the world from the very kind of fascism that Harry's wife and her husband promote. Many of our parents and grandparents died alongside the British for the common cause of liberty. But it was Britain that held the fortress during the Blitz and at very great cost. 
then goes on to add, you've no idea how embarrassed we are over here because of Harry's wife. We all wish we could send Britain a collective apology for her behaviour. Our deep-seated fear is that she's giving you an image of us Americans as a kind of barbaric people with no manners or knowledge of the world outside. Troglodytes. Maybe that is what we've become, but my generation will never cease to admire the genius of the British people's nether. Lauren Act 2. Oh, gag me with a spoon. You need to get your head out of the Brits' rears if you only realise how anti-American Brits really are. Hosey, you need to get your facts straight. It's you who doesn't like the British, not the other way around. Talk about bias. That was for you, Lauren Act 2. Bit of a fight breaking out. Adel says, foodie, I have news for you, Otnes. There was never any royal fever here in the United States over the pair in California. Never. In fact, we're thrilled they're laying low. Oh, wait. Here in the States, they get very little. If any coverage, so to us, they've been laying low for two years. Americans don't care about the pair or their brand because everything they do is hanging on the connection to the royal family and we'd rather have real royals than a couple of fakes who get the majority of their exercise from bandwagon jumping and performance activism. They are a joke here. Well, again, plenty of comments in a similar vein and if Harry's wife thought she was popular in the United States... It's only a PR people that are telling you that because the comments here demonstrate they're not. But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.